Anfield is being expanded again. It's great news, of course, but it still begs the question, is this going to be the last investment FSG make on Anfield, or is there going to be a phase three and four? I'll never tell. <laughs> are they going to leave it at two redeveloped stands in an overall capacity of 61,000, or are they going to go all in with their grand master plan to fully redevelop Anfield into a, a much larger grand stadium? That would be lovely. I'll leave a link below if you want to read the club's uh, official statements in full. But the standout part of the statement was uh, towards the end when our managing director, Andy Hughes, said, this is a huge milestone in our journey towards bringing more supporters into Anfield. Now, this is what I really want to talk about in this video because he specifically calls this project a milestone in our journey, not the end of the journey. This hints that the club might have ambitions or even plans to go beyond what they initially proposed in 2012. You never know. There's a website called regeneratingliverpool.com which I'll leave a link to below and that has all of the original information of the overall regeneration of the Anfield project from phases 1 through 5. And when I say 1 through 5, only phases 1 and 2 included work on the stadium. Phases 3, 4 and 5 involves the wider Anfield area. Good job, too. But notably, this project only states that two stands will be redeveloped and coupled with FSG's reluctance to get the fans hopes of following the disastrous false promises Hicks and Gillette made under the previous administration. They keep everything close to the chest and as a result, there's been been a lot of questions, rumours and speculation among supporters as to whether they will continue redeveloping Anfield beyond Phase 2. The only snippets we get are statements like this which suggest it. And there was another comment made by Ian Eyre in 2014 when he was asked about whether the club would go beyond the 60,000 mark and he said, and I quote, never say never, end quote. However, they have stressed time and again that with Anfield's constraints needing to be taken into consideration, they have to find a happy medium, a sweet spot as they've called it. Now, as we all know, the issue over the stadium has been a pressing one since the early 90s. There are literally so many reasons why Liverpool need a bigger ground. The first and most pressing one for me is the season ticket waiting list with the sheer number of fans who have been expected to wait literal decades to get a ticket. By some estimates there are 25,000 people on the waiting list who are expected to have to wait up to 15 years before being likely to be offered a season ticket at Liverpool. It's the greatest amusement park in the Colorado area and nobody can go! And anyone who lives in Merseyside will tell you there are countless countless numbers of fans who are either trying to get on the waiting list or just don't even bother attempting to get a ticket for themselves and instead rely on spurs or friends and relatives who have a spare ticket when they can't attend themselves. I mean, in my community alone, I think there's maybe 10, 15 people who I know for certain have got season tickets to Liverpool and easily several times that number who I know would go if they could. You only have to look at the homecoming parades Liverpool have after winning a big trophy to see how many people actually can travel into Liverpool for a big game on short notice. And that's not taking into consideration the fans from across the country and around the world into consideration consideration too, including those from Ireland, North Wales, Scandinavia and Asia, who we all see travel to the city on match day. Anfield simply does not cater to the size of the club's fan base, and we all know it. We all know that 60,000 is not going to be big enough. A slightly smaller reason why Anfield needs to keep being expanded beyond Phase 2 is more from a aesthetic perspective. I mean, two massive modern 21st century stands and two slightly smaller, shoddy early 90s stands. I mean... I mean, curb hood. So, yeah, I mean, come on now. You can't leave it looking like this. It looks fucking unfinished. A big reason for me why we need a bigger stadium might seem trivial and petty to others, but it's important for the prestige of the club. We're a club that sees itself on a level with the likes of Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Manchester United. These clubs, like us, all have a glamorous history of European success and domestic dominance with a name and reputation which attracts tens, if not hundreds of millions of fans across the globe. And all of these clubs have the biggest modern grounds in Europe with capacities ranging from 70,000 to 100,000 with ambitions to grow and develop them further still. A club stadium is arguably the main symbol of the club. It's a statement to the world which states we can attract this many passionate fans on a match day because we're such a big club. And Anfield, through most of the modern era, has been utterly dwarfed both in capacity and in modernity to the arenas that these clubs have. What's with him? Laser envy. We've gotten away with it by having one of, if not the best atmospheres in European football, which gives our famous old ground the mystique and reputation. But it's lacked the capacity to accommodate our fan base. And regardless of how good our atmosphere is, it's hard to compete with the likes of what Barca players experience when they walk out to a 100,000 strong mosaic at the new Camp. I mean, that is majestic, that is grandeur personified. But we have a fan base just as big, with a passion that is second to none, and for that reason, our stadium is woefully below par for what we all know it has the potential to be. I mean, like I said, we just want our famous ground to be competing with the old Traffords, the Bernabeus, the San Siros, and the Allianz Arenas of this world, and instead, even when the club finishes its phase two, which is all and everything FSG have publicly committed to, the size and standard of our stadium 
team will only be competing with West Ham's, Tottenham's and Chelsea stadiums. Clubs with fan bases in history is utterly dwarfed by ours. Now I know our fan base's ego and how we think our club should project itself to the world might not come across as the best thing for our owners to be investing hundreds of millions of pounds on, but think of the bigger picture. Think of how the management and the board sell the concept of the club to potential new signings. I mean, yes, they'll delve into the team and the new players' potential role in the team and then go on into the, uh, the atmosphere and the fans, etc. But one thing the new player will be assessing is his working environment compared to the facilities of other clubs who are just as big as us who may also be interested in it. I mean, before the main stand was redeveloped, this was the state of Liverpool's dressing room and what the players would walk out through on a match day to get onto the pitch. Now, compare that to the likes of Barcelona and Bayern Munich facilities. I mean, yes, Anfield's atmosphere has always been a real selling point and that will never be needed to improve. But the stadium facilities and working environment was badly needed an upgrade for the majority of the modern era. I have no doubt in my mind that the state of Anfield's facilities and working environment will have cost us potential marquee signings in the past, I'm sure of it. This phase two is a very, very welcome step forward, but the stadium as a whole still falls short compared to what the club should ideally be looking to accomplish for the ground when taking our competition into consideration. And the final reason why we need a bigger ground that I want to mention is the stadium's match day contribution to the club's revenue. Now this is an issue that stretches right the way back to the early 90s when things like this became important. Out of all of Europe's so-called elite clubs, you know, clubs who've achieved historical European success throughout the decades and a leading domestic dominance of their home country, stretching back decades, attracting millions of fans on a local, national and global level along the way. Liverpool are the one club out of those so-called elite clubs who have taken the longest to truly modernise as a club in the so-called modern era. And unlike the others, this has severely cost us. We're the one club who have taken nearly 30 years to truly capitalise on our history and global popularity and it's impacted our ability to win trophies throughout the modern era. The others all pressed ahead building giant modern stadiums with as many VIP facilities as they could fit in, signing lucrative sponsorships and kit supplier deals and so on, and it allowed them to have the finances needed to continue winning titles and challenging Europe into the modern era. Liverpool are still playing catch-up with many of these clubs. I mean, take any one of the other giant clubs and you'll see progressive building work off the pitch throughout the modern era to maximise their potential and allow them to continue competing at the pinnacle of European football. Until Liverpool built, built the main stand in 2017, our match day revenue was shockingly low compared to all our contemporaries among the elite of European football and when you consider our ability to compete both on and off the pitch in the transfer market then compare it to our estimated fan base size you know we've been falling short and something needed to change now i don't want to come across as placing all of the emphasis on the uh, on, on the stadium there are other revenue streams such as broadcasting merchandise and sponsorships that liverpool have done fairly well in capitalizing on and we have won trophies throughout the modern era more than most other clubs have but until recently we've always been just short of seriously competing for the big two the title in the champions league and i think this last piece of the financial jigsaw was the one last piece needed to be able to push us from a, a top four club able to buy well and compete in the Champions League to a team able to buy premium and actually win the Champions League as well as finish first at home. I mean, let's face it, our Champions League success in 2005 wasn't down to us being the best team in Europe. It was more like a, a, a lesser situation to Leicester's title win in 2017 where the circumstances and no shortage of luck worked in our favour and a below par team managed to pull off a shock. So we've only really won a title in Champions League on merit since FSG started building the club up, which in Entice the world-class managers to join the project. We're finally doing what we should have started doing in 1992, and we're finally starting to reap the benefits. The stadium's been built bigger and more modern. We've built a newer and more modern training ground. It's attracted a world-class manager. His success has attracted more lucrative sponsors. Now we're finally going somewhere as a club and actually winning the big trophies, not just competing for them. We have to keep this up to try and stay ahead, because unlike in the 90s, we have billionaire owners to worry about now, who have bottomless pits of cash. We need Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Man United levels of spending capabilities with a fan base the size of ours and a winning team that we currently have we can achieve it if we have a board committed to investing in what's necessary to achieve it unfortunately however regardless of the lofty dreams and expectations of us fans regarding our stadium there are significant hurdles and barriers in our way if we want to go beyond the current commitment to 61,000. typical First of all, before I continue, I want to just state that I'm no expert on the laws and regulations regarding uh, construction and engineering uh, in regard when it comes to stadiums and arenas in the UK. The reason this video is so late to the party when the Phase 2 announcement was a, a few days ago is because I tried to research the laws and regulations regarding stadiums and unfortunately a Google search on the topic is just spanned to fucking high heaven with Covid regulations and it was so fucking frustrating. It was taking too long and I, in the end I just thought, fuck it, fuck it. 
Fuck it. So I want to start by stating that most of what I'm about to talk about has come from being a part of chat rooms on the topic down the years, such as the, the Anfield page on skyscrapercity.com, which I'll leave a link to below. The lads and lasses who contribute on there are not only Liverpool fans, but some are also architectural and engineering enthusiasts who are far more clued up than I am regarding the legal requirements in uh, being able to expand our stadium further. But having been a reader and contributor to the discussion down the years, I've picked up on a few of the uh, hurdles which stand in our way if we want to build our ground further. But again, I am not stating this as fact, it's just what I've picked up on in conversation. If there are any actual experts out there on the topic who happen to watch, please call me out in the comments below on anything I get wrong. Now, one of the first and most obvious hurdles uh, to building beyond phase two is the fact that Anfield is built in a residential area. It took us decades to buy up the necessary houses needed to be able to construct a main stand, which decayed the area for a period of decades and frankly is a deep source of shame for the club of what they did to the Anfield area. Not to mention a stupid one, I mean, why didn't you loan those houses back out on a renewable short-term tenancies in the meantime until the time was right to finally start work on the stadium? I mean, at least then you'd have made a bit of money off them and keep the Anfield residents happy that you weren't decaying their community. Damn it. But maybe a football club aren't allowed to do that, I don't know. Perhaps one of you will be able to answer that in the comments. Now, considering the uh, two remaining stands, this Kenny Dalgley stand looks like it's going to have a similar situation to the main stand, in that we're going to have a problem with acquiring the land due to all the houses. And it's also more houses that first meets the eye. We can't just buy the houses needed for the footprint of the stand and expect to start building. The houses immediately next to a potential new build are entitled to what's called right to light. And basically what that means is any new build cannot obstruct um, these houses right to a certain level of sunlight and space. So we need to buy and demolish additional houses so that the closest houses affected by the new build have no sunlight issues. Another issue is transportation. Apparently, and again, I am not quoting a law, I am only going off the discussion between architectural and engineering enthusiasts. Any stadium or arena above 60,000 must have adequate transportation infrastructure to ferry people in and out of the area in a reasonable time. And that includes having regular local train facilities within one mile of the ground. Now, currently the closest train stations to Anfield are Sandhills and Kirkdale, but they are 1.3 and 1.4 miles away from the ground respectively. Anyone who's ever driven to Anfield or taken a taxi from the city centre on match day will tell you Anfield is an absolute bottleneck on the roads and that's with the current capacity so yeah we'll need alternative means of transportation to ease the congestion on the roads. You think? Which brings me nicely on to the next um, hurdle preventing further expansion, parking. We have one rip-off car park behind the Anfield Road End. The rest of us cheapskates all find the parking space about a mile or two from the ground on trust those little scallies dotted about there. Mind your car, mate. You gotta love the kids in Anfield though, like they always make me laugh. You know, the little scally lads off into mind your car and the little lassies all uh, dotted about asking, penny for the guy. You know, uh, a guy which is basically a bunch of clothes and a fucking Halloween mask where the head should be, which honestly makes the whole thing look like a fucking doll that will put Chucky or Annabelle to shame. Now the final hurdle I want to mention is the big one for the most important stand, the cop. Unfortunately, the cop is situated on Walton Breck Road, uh, which is a main road that accommodates a bus route and therefore can't be closed for long periods of time, unlike the Anfield Road then currently is. There's also several shops directly opposite, which will all need to be relocated, and frankly, good luck asking them to be so kind as to do that when they are so well situated directly opposite the most famous and well photographed stand in England. And perhaps the most awkward obstacle, the closest building to the cop on that side of the road is that church. Churches don't move. No government will tell a religious institution to up and move. It's the worst PR imaginable. So the right to light the neighbours are entitled to, transportation infrastructure, parking and the main road shops and church opposite the cop. How do we overcome them to achieve our dream of a modernised mega Anfield that can stand toe to toe with what the other European giants are building to? Well again, let me state, I'm no expert. This is simply my opinion from reading experts and enthusiasts engaged on the topic in chat rooms down the years. So I am sort of researched on the topic but again, I'm not an expert. If you want an expert's opinion, go and seek it yourself online. There's plenty of chat rooms like in Skyscra Skyscraper City, I'll leave a link below. So the right to light issue. Buy more houses, simple. Thankfully, unlike during the main stand saga, the Anfield Regeneration Project also partnered Liverpool FC with your housing group, who bought up many of the local houses to renovate and lease out. So now if Liverpool do want to buy up houses for further expansion, one company owning a significant number of those houses will shave some time. How do we fix parking? Buy Goodison Park, turn it into a multi-storey car park with a victory plaque right at the top state and all of Liverpool's famous triumphs over there. I'm just joking. But having a multi-storey car park behind the Annie Road End makes definite sense to me. Now as for having a nearby train line, this is obviously the most expensive and difficult hurdle. But believe it or not, it is possible. There happens to be an active freight train line near the ground that did used to be part of the passenger network way back in the day. And Mersey Rail are currently expanding and improving their network and that line is being considered for conversion into passenger use. But one thing to keep an eye out for will be if the club 
hub and or merger rail decide to convert that freight line into a passenger line anytime soon because if they do it might be a hint that further expansion is on the cards. And finally Walton Breck Road the shops in the church. I'll admit I'm stumped with this one. Rerouting the road without closing it is one potential solution if they can figure it out but that will likely mean demolishing the shops first and as I said good luck convincing them to sell up and move. And as for the church maybe incorporate it into the new build build a newer bigger and fancier mini cathedral somewhere nearby to bribe them away or just ask them very nicely what Jesus would do and hope for the best. We need a little Christmas miracle. Lock and load. But with safe standing and rail seats and edging closer now, we could maybe have a larger stand without having to do any major reconstruction work at all. But who knows? So let me know below your thoughts on any of the topics I've mentioned in this video. Should Liverpool pursue a larger stadium than 61,000? Are we able to? What capacity would you like to see us build it up to? Let me know below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content. I'm a new channel. It's all appreciated and needed. I'll be uploading more and more on all things Liverpool as time goes on. So cheers lads and lasses. Catch you later. Thank you.